Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Awake, my soul, and with the sun, thy daily stage of duty run. Shake off dull sloth and joyful rise to pay thy morning sacrifice. Lord, I my vows to thee renew. Disperse my sins as morning dew. Guard my first springs of thought and will, and with thyself my spirit fill. Direct, control, suggest this day all I design or do or say, that all my powers with all their might in thy soul glory may unite. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him all creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And apart from your grace, there is no health in us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare all those who confess their faults. Restore all those who are penitent according to your promises, declared to all people in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may now live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Grant to your faithful people, merciful Lord, pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. We worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. O come, let us adore him. O be joyful in the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Be assured that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. O go with your way into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and speak good of his name. For the Lord is gracious, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures from generation to generation. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. O come, let us adore him. The portion of the Psalter to be read for today is Psalms 111 and 112. Psalm 111. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks unto the Lord with my whole heart, in the company of the upright and among the congregation. The works of the Lord are great, sought out by all who have pleasure in them. His work is worthy to be praised and held in honor, and his righteousness endures forever. He has made his marvelous works to be had in remembrance. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He has given food to those who fear him. He shall ever be mindful of his covenant. He has shown his people the power of his works, that he may give them the heritage of the nations. The works of his hands are faithfulness and justice. All his commandments are true. They stand fast for ever and ever, and are done in truth and equity. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all those who live accordingly. His praise endures forever. Psalm 112. Praise the Lord. Blessed is the one who fears the Lord, who has great delight in his commandments. His seed shall be mighty in the land. The generation of the faithful shall be blessed. Riches and plentiness shall be his and his righteousness shall endure forever. For the upright 
there rises light in the darkness. He is merciful, loving, and righteous. It is good for him to be generous in lending and to guide his words with discretion. For he shall never be moved, and the righteousness shall be kept in everlasting remembrance. He will not be afraid of any evil tidings, for his heart is steadfast and trust in the Lord. His heart is established and will not fear. At the last he shall see his desire upon his enemies. He has given freely to the poor, and his righteousness endures forever. His horn shall be exalted with honor. The ungodly shall see it and shall be angry. He shall gnash his teeth and waste away. The desire of the ungodly shall perish. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. A reading from the prophet Hosea, chapter 14. Return, O Israel, to the Lord your God, for you have stumbled because of your inequity. Take with you words and return to the Lord. Say to him, Take away all inequity, accept what is good, and we will pay with bulls and vows of our lips. Assyria shall not save us. We will not ride on horses, and we will say no more our God to the work of our hands. In you the orphan finds mercy. I will heal their apostasy. I will love them freely, for my anger has turned from them. I will be like the dew to Israel. He shall blossom like the lily. He shall take root like the trees of Lebanon. His shoot shall spread out. His beauty shall be like the olive, and his fragrance like Lebanon. They shall return and dwell beneath my shadow, and they shall flourish like the grain. They shall blossom like the vine. Their fame shall be like the wine of Lebanon. O Ephraim, what have I to do with idols? It is I who answer and look after you. I am like an evergreen cypress. From me comes your fruit. Whoever is wise, let him understand these things. Whoever is discerning, let him know them. For the ways of the Lord are right, and the upright walk in them. But transgressors stumble in them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple, on the throne of your majesty. Glory to you. Glory to you, seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you, beholding the depths in the high vault of heaven. Glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. A reading from the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John, chapter 14, 15 through 31. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper, to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world will see me no more. But you will see me, because I live all, you also will live. In that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me, and he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world. Jesus answered him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home in, with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, 
whom the Father will send in my name. He will teach you all things and bring to you and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away, and I will come to you. If you loved me, you would have rejoiced, because I am going to the Father. For the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it takes place, so that when it does take place, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming. He has no claim on me, but I do as the Father has commanded me, so that the world may know that I love the Father. Rise, let us go from here. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain. For with your blood you have redeemed for God from every family, language, people, and nation, a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so, to him who sits upon the throne, and to Christ the Lamb, be worship and praise, dominion and splendor, forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, are you wise? Who do you consider wise? What is wisdom? The dictionary says that wisdom is have the power to judge properly what is true or right. When I read that, it surprised me a little. It's not the first thing I think of when I think of wisdom. Often in our society, we link wisdom with people who are older than us. In our society, wisdom is often coupled with age. Wisdom, I think, is also associated with knowledge. People who have loads of knowledge on a particular topic are considered wise. Our society has definite ideas on who has wisdom and who doesn't. Brothers and sisters, we all have ideas and people who we think are wise. However, today, I want to think about not just what society thinks is wise, but what is wisdom in God's eyes. Who does God consider wise? As we look at our passage today, we see that Israel has turned away from God. We see Hosea's plea to return to God. Israel had stumbled in many ways. Israel had turned to other gods, that of Baal and of consulting wooden poles. It's interesting to note the language used. Israel was in a relationship with God, like that of a marriage. God the husband, the provider, nurturer, and deliverer has been cheated on by Israel. Brothers and sisters, would we consider the people of Israel wise? By all accounts, you would have to say no. People who steal and commit adultery don't fit into our definitions of wisdom. One assumes that they don't know what is true or right, or else they would have carried it out. What do you think God thinks of Israel's behavior? Would it fit by his standards of wisdom? The first verse in our passage today answers this question. It says they were stealing, murdering, and committing idolatry, which are not part of God's standards of wisdom, so they were stumbling. However, after stumbling, they are also hurting. They needed God, and that's exactly what Hosea orders. Return to your God. The first step in becoming wise in God's eyes is to acknowledge your Creator and to turn to Him. Hosea then proceeds to outline what returning to God is, even given them the words of a prayer to say to God. This prayer acknowledges that Israel has done the wrong thing. They have sinned against their God, and now they are asking God to take away all guilt. Hosea even details what the sins are, including having affairs with foreign gods, gods that have been made by the work of human hands, wooden poles. It is very easy to be like Israel, who in their wisdom decided to rely on humans, either themselves or other humans as people, who have the power to judge properly and what is true and right, particularly in the world we live in presently. Brothers and sisters, 
In our society today, we have many gods made by our hands, many things we worship that lull us into a false sense of security. Things like a nice house, good job, money in the bank, being nice to people, giving money to charity, lots of things we think will ultimately save us, lots of good deeds done by our hands. Well, God says to all, return to me, forgive us our sins, take away our guilt, so that we may offer you the fruit of our lips, so we can praise you, God, with our words and songs and prayers. For you, God, and only you will the orphan or the fatherless find mercy and be saved. Now, if Israel had returned to God and prayed the prayer outlined by Hosea, we see what God's response would be. This describes a beautiful picture of Israel's bountiful prosperity which would result from being in a restored relationship with their God. They will blossom and their beauty will be like that of an olive tree. The dew will enable Israel's dry climate to give life to dying grass and plants. There is such rich richness in this language, in this imagery describing how Israel could have been healed. In verse 9, we see this message summarized. Today's message has been leading up to this verse. Here are the wise. Here are God's standards for being wise, clearly specified. And we see it's not just about understanding what has been outlined in our passage. There also must be action. The dictionary says that wisdom is having the power to judge properly what is true or right. But being wise in God's eyes is so much more than that. It's not just having the power to judge properly. It's actually carrying out what is true and right. And Israel, though they might have known what is true and right, didn't actually carry it out. One assumes that they didn't heed Hosea's words. Their capital city of Samaria was invaded and the people were taken captive. They continued to stumble tragically, and this was a pattern repeated generation after generation. How were people to be wise in God's standard? Well, it wasn't actually until Jesus God's only Son, came that we would see the glorious bountiful prosperity as described in verses 5 through 7. He was right with God, without sin, perfect in every single way. Jesus dealt with the sins of the whole world when he died on the cross. He is how we can have our guilt removed, our sins forgiven, because he took on the punishment, the wrath that God has for sin. Israel's, ours, our neighbors, all sin by all people. Well, who are the wise? Who are those considered wise in God's eyes? Well, it's not necessarily those who are true and right. It's those who are walking in the ways of the Lord, who turn to him, who ask for forgiveness of their sins, knowing that Jesus has paid the price. Brothers and sisters, what are you relying on to save you? Your partner? An assuring friend, a charismatic world leader, your good deeds. The common denominator in all those is people trying to save themselves. God's wisdom is completely opposite to what the world says is wise. What is at the very core of being saved is Jesus Christ dying on the cross, which in the world's view is utter foolishness. Yet in 1 Corinthians 1.20, we read that God makes foolish the wisdom of the world. No human wisdom or human-made thing is going to save you. Turn to God and ask him to take away all your guilt. Ask for forgiveness through Jesus, and you will be saved not just for this life, but for the next as well. And understand that God's response is unchanging to those who ask for forgiveness. I will heal their disloyalty. I will love them freely. All you have to do is ask. For those who have turned to God, who have been healed by him, who have received their salvation, understand that it doesn't stop there. We are to keep asking for forgiveness as the Holy Spirit keeps working in us and convicting us of specific sins. We need to keep confessing and being active, putting to death sin in your life, and understand that you are living a blessed life. You will be like a blossoming lily 
a deep-rooted tree, a fragrant garden protected by God's shade. He is the God who promises to save you and look after you, living a blessed life. Would you be considered wise in God's eyes? Amen and amen. Let us now profess our faith to God and our neighbor as it is summarized in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. As our Savior Christ taught us, we now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show your mercy upon us and grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide those who govern us and lead us in the way of justice and truth. Clothe your ministers with righteousness and let your people sing with joy. O Lord, save your people and bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and defend us by your mighty power. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and take not your Holy Spirit from us. Keep your church, O Lord, by your perpetual mercy, and because without you the frailty of our nature causes us to fall, keep us from all things hurtful and lead us to all things profitable for our salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life, and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, May not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Before the Lord's eternal throne, ye nations bow, sacred joy. Know that the Lord is God alone. He can create, he can destroy. His sovereign power without our aid formed us of clay and gave us breath. And when like wandering sheep we strayed, He saved us from the power of death. We are his people, we his care, our souls and all our mortal frame. What lasting honor shall we rear, almighty maker to thy name? Well crown thy gates with thankful songs, high as the heavens our voices raise, and earth with her ten thousand tongues shall fill thy courts with sounding praise. Wide as the world is thy command, Vast as eternity thy love, firm as a rock thy truth must stand, when rolling years shall cease to move. Let us now pray for our own needs and those of others.
Heavenly Father, grant these our prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. In the cross of Christ I glory, towering over the wrecks of time, all the light of sacred history gathers around its head sublime. When the woes of life o'ertake me, hopes deceive and fears annoy, never shall the cross forsake me, lo, it glows with peace and joy. When the sun of bliss is beaming, light and love upon my way, from the cross the radiance streaming adds new luster to the day. Bane and blessing, pain and pleasure, by the cross are sanctified. Peace is there that knows no measure, joys that through all time abide. In the cross of Christ I glory, towering over the wrecks of time. All the light of sacred story gathers round its head sublime. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we are unworthy servants give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who live, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or more are gathered together in his name, you will grant their request. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen.